Hey everyone, I'm Jordan Spivey, doing with my dad. Travis Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our awesome science videos. In today's video, we will start part one of our four part series on four mechanisms of evolution which include natural selection, genetic drift, mutations, and gene flow. Today's video will be about natural selection and adaptation. So, so let's, let's do this. Our learning target for today is, I can explain how natural selection and adaptation leads to the evolution of populations over time. Before we dive into our topic for today, let's talk about evolution. Evolution is the process by which modern organisms have descended from ancient organisms. This means that organisms have slowly changed, adapted, and evolved over time to better survive in their environment. Let's compare the modern day horse to its ancestors from millions of years ago. Notice how around 55 million years ago, Ancestors of the modern horse were much smaller and had distinct toes instead of one hoof. This made them slow runners. As millions of years passed, notice that the horses got larger and their toe-like shoulders turned into a single hoof. This allowed for them to run faster and escape from predators. Horses that displayed these adaptations survived and were able to reproduce. This is one of the many examples that shows evolution favors the most fit individuals for an environment. There are four mechanisms that cause evolution and they are natural selection, genetic drift, mutations, and gene flow. Let's start off with natural selection. Natural selection is the process of adaptation that organisms who are most suited to their environment survive and reproduce most successfully. This is otherwise known as survival of the fittest. Let's analyze the following picture with giraffes. If you notice the leaves are high up in the tree, giraffes that are taller and have longer necks are able to reach and eat the leaves from the tree which gives them the nutrients and energy they need to survive. The shorter giraffes are not able to reach the leaves and therefore die off. This means that the taller giraffes with longer necks are much more likely to reproduce and pass their DNA genetic information on to their offspring. Taller giraffes with longer necks will increase over time in the giraffe population because their traits provide them with a greater chance of surviving and reproducing. While the frequency of alleles or traits of shorter giraffes in the giraffe population will decrease over time because these traits make it more difficult for giraffes to survive and reproduce. Overall, longer necks are inherited characteristics that increase giraffes chances of survival and reproduction in their environment. Natural selection works because positive traits survive more allowing those traits to become more common in a population. Let's look at an example of natural selection in bee populations. Look at the top picture in the following example. What bee population is smaller? The green or brown beetles? You're right, the green beetle population is larger. Now let's look at a couple of generations later in the bottom picture. What do you notice? Correct, I'm glad we're on the same page. The green beetle population was larger and the small beetle population was smaller a few generations back in the top picture. But in the bottom picture, the green beetle population got smaller and the brown beetle population got larger. One thing you may or may not have paid attention to is that the table the brown beetles are on is brown which gives the brown beetles an advantage because they are able to camouflage or blend in with the color of the brown table making it more difficult for the birds to see them. The green beetles are easier to see and therefore are eating much more than the brown beetles. If we continue these generations, there will continue to be more brown beetles and fewer green beetles. The brown beetles have an adaptive advantage over the green beetles because of their brown color. The brown beetles a little frequency will increase while the green beetles a little frequency will decrease because the brown beetles have a better chance of surviving and reproducing in this environment. Let's look at an example of the change in allele frequencies via natural selection. In the first generation, the allele frequency for light brown fur mice and black fur mice is 0.5 or 50% each. The light brown fur mice have good camouflage while the black fur mice have poor camouflage. This means it's easier for the light brown fur mice to blend in with the surroundings and not be seen by the fox than it is for the black fur mice. The black fur mice are targeted by the fox predator since it is easier for the fox to see them. Now look at the second generation of mice. Notice that the allele frequency has changed. Light brown fur mice now have an allele frequency of 0.7 or 70% and the black fur mice now have an allele frequency of 0.3 or 30%. Look at the third generation of mice. Light brown fur mice have an allele frequency of 0.9 or 90% while black fur mice only have an allele frequency of 0.1 or 10%. This happened as a direct result of natural selection. The brown fur mice have a brown fur allele that allows them to hide from predators better than the black fur mice. This brown fur allele allows them to survive and reproduce in their environment at a greater rate than the black fur mice. 
This explains why there are now more light brown fur mice in the population than there are black fur mice. The light brown fur mice are most fit for the environment, which is another classic example of survival of the fittest. In summary, natural selection and adaptation lead to evolution of species by the environment determining which traits are best for survival in a certain area and which traits will decrease species chances of survival. The more beneficial traits are naturally selected because organisms with these traits have adaptations which make them more likely to survive and reproduce than organisms with less beneficial traits. If you can't survive in an environment, then it is highly unlikely you will be able to reproduce and therefore your genes don't get passed on to the next generation. The process of natural selection happens continuously over time for hundreds of thousands of years and is exactly what led to the organisms that roam the earth today. Natural selection is a mechanism or tool that leads to greater evolution. And that's our video for today. Now let's test your knowledge to see how proficient you are with explaining how natural selection and adaptation lead to evolution over time by taking our video quiz. You are sure which one of the devices scan the QR code at the bottom right of the screen or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take the quiz. Remember, 80% or higher for proficiency, record your results on your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you better keep going because it's not over until you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also click the bell icon so you don't miss on any of our awesome videos. Peace and have a positive, productive day. Hey, does he look like he can fight? Come on, bro.